to the eternally curious, unapologetically superstitious Midnight Society Rejects, Stormy Willow welcomes you. We are the eccentric coots, storytellers, explorers, dabblers, practitioners, and paranormal pupils who examine the what's ifs, the what's that's, and WTFs of this dimension and beyond. Welcome to the Stormy Willow Podcast. I'm your host, Adele, along with my sister, Sarah. Hey, you guys. And, uh, in case you're new to the show and didn't catch the intro, we are a paranormal podcast, so we talk all things creepy, spooky, weird, unexplained, unknown, all the fun stuff. That's right. Welcome, and happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, and Black History Month. And Black History Month, yes, and uh, USA, USA. I think we got we got Olympics going on too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Super Bowl tomorrow. And Super Bowl tomorrow. So yeah, go Bengals. And um, and I can't believe you forgot to mention this. It's Girl oh, Scout hey, Girl Scout season. What I went um to see my dealers today. <laughs> so I'll be munching on some tagalongs. <laughs> so I tell you a spooky story. <laughs> That sounds and, awesome. You know, I also, um, if you are watching this, you're probably like, wow, Sarah, you look so much more beautiful than normal. I mean, that's what you were thinking, right, Adele? I could tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can actually see well, you. <laughs> listen, that's because my friend Aaron at 1213 Studio and Charlotte had a salon day, and he's just, he's amazing. He and his fiance Arthur, on the studio, and if you're in the Charlotte area, Go 1213 Studio, Aaron, Arthur, all the gang there. They are just the most talented group of stylists. And I think Adele and I, um, we're pretty like we're we're pretty when it comes to certain things, like we're really funny about like what we'll spend money on, but we both agree when it comes to good haircut and color, do not skip there, friends. Do not. (laughs) And I've been going to Aaron. Yes, I've been going to Aaron for years and he just makes me feel like a million bucks, and they are just great. They just make you feel so good. So, and I got some really cool Valentines while I was there. So I'll be eating. I'll be eating like Valentine hearts and Girl Scout oh. cookies. Um, this is my favorite. It says, uh, "Eat me." <laughs> That's a fun Valentine. So yeah, I've, I've got my snacks ready to go. Like I'm ready to do this. <laughs> Well, you're telling the story, so you can't get going too hard on the snacking. <laughs> That's true. It might be a little awkward silence. Yeah, <laughs> are, you, are, are you ready to ad lib when that happens? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like I have all the snacks and I'm presenting. <laughs> yeah, you kind of <laughs> went the wrong way there. <laughs> it just kind of happened that way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, so, well, how are you? What's going if we're on? Plugging, uh, hair salons. I'm going to tell everybody to go to Rocket Hair Studio in Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right. And uh, check out Genesis. She's a sweetheart and does amazing, amazing work short hair, long hair, and color. I love it. Same. <laughs> so we've got Aaron and Arthur in the Charlotte area and Genesis in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area. Totally showing some love to people that make us feel so amazing. So thank you for making us feel so beautiful. Yes, thank you. (laughs) All right. Any other endorsements we need to do? (laughs) (laughs) Not not this episode. We're just gonna we're just gonna shove product down everybody's throat. (laughs) We probably like already lost any new people. Like what? I was like, I didn't even start on my Girl Scout treat. I mean, you know, like it's yeah, a lot of lot of love. We have some I'll say Adele and I both um, have just been so blessed with so many amazing people in our lives. So we try to give credit where credit is due for sure. Well, um, so speaking of credit, where credit is due. Uh, where are we going with oh. this? You and your wonderful <laughs> ways to introduce your topics. Right? Don't you love how I always introduce my hot topics? So this is my favorite episode of Ghost Adventures. And it's Bobby Mackey's Music World. <laughs> Do you know this one? Which, the first episode? Because don't one. they go back a few they, times? Thank you. Yes, that's in my notes. So they, they go back. But the first is my favorite. Zach I can't love that quit episode. Bobby Mackey's. I love that episode 
so yes. much. It never gets old. I've probably seen it. I don't even know how many times, but I absolutely positively love it. And so I was inspired to, uh, to do Bobby Mackey's Music World, The Haunted Honky Tonk. <laughs> <laughs> and so I want you to think, you know, I think you might have inspired me without realizing it. So Adele is a huge fan of Patrick Swayze, like her favorite movie, and mine too is Roadhouse. So I want you to think like Roadhouse, but with ghosts. Because that's how I picture Bobby Mackey's music world, if you will. Totally. It's very Roadhouse. I can see it. I can smell it. (laughs) You're like, yes, I'm there. I'm there. So like, instead of getting like kicked in the crotch in the opening credits, like by a human, it might be a ghost. Ooh. Just saying, like that's how I'm, that's how I, I wanted to set this up for you. <laughs> yes, I, I am only familiar with Bobby Mackey's via Zach Bagans from Ghost yeah. Adventures. So, well, I'll be honest with you. Some of my research, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and find my sources. Like now that you mentioned it, um, some of my sources do come from um, the Travel Channel, Bobby Mackey's Music World. They are. Um, they actually did a write up on it. Ghost Adventures did. So my sources come from that. They actually come from, I found a really cool um, article on, it's called thebittersoutherner.com, which was really cool. And then of course, um, my favorite is always a good Wikipedia. So, yeah, Wikipedia is really helpful. Like when you want to know something real quick, it's like, just tell me. And then um, Ghost Adventures did a really good write up on it on their site too. So they are cited in my work as well. Um, so if you're not familiar with Bobby Mackey's Music World, I'm just going to do a quick rundown and then we're going to get into the specifics of the things that have happened on this property that might ca- be causing some of this um, energy I, from happening. I personally want to know more about the man, Bobby Mackey. So I hope we go a little bit Listen, deeper. Bobby Mackey um, has like he actually has like a CD and I was going to send it to you for Valentine's day, but it didn't. <laughs> I don't I have a CD player. Well, cause I'm part of the can, 21st century. <laughs> listen, well, I can't uh, make you a mixtape. Maybe I can buy I'll you like a, uh, is he on I Spotify? Can, I'm going to check. You check while get, I do it right, right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just to give everybody a background, if you're like, you're like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about right now, Sarah. <laughs> I'm just it is on you. Spotify. Yes, I knew it. Knew it. And so here's just a little Ooh, rundown. Sorry. His number one song is Johanna. It yeah. is, and we're going to talk People, about her. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. Yeah. Let's so we'll it. play that for you in just a moment. Um, but so Bobby Mackey's Music World, it's a nightclub or um, a honky tonk, if you will. It's located in Wilder, Kentucky, and it's owned by a country music singer, Bobby Mackey. Um, urban legends, things that we've seen like on Ghost Adventures, and I think that um, other play people have definitely, there have been a lot of paranormal um researchers that have gone there but urban legend claims that this nightclub is one of the most haunted in america um they've had a number of murders suicides and just uh, when i talk to you about the history you'll kind of see that there's just been kind of a lot of stuff that's happened here on this property that might be the cause of a lot of this activity that um that has been um people have seen or you know experienced so Anyway, it's supposed to be the most haunted nightclub in America. Now, Bobby himself claims that the site, um, he personally has never experienced anything there himself, but his wife is so terrified she will not step foot back into the place. So, and I'll get into some accounts that people have had, but um, so uh, just to give you a quick rundown and then we'll get into the specifics. Um, originally, this site was a slaughterhouse in the early 19th century. And later, it was torn down for um, construction of a roadhouse. And it took different names under the roadhouse. Um, one of the most popular was called the Brisbane. And it was the Brisbane until it was purchased in 1978 by Bobby Mackey. Um, and we very... Have- do we know anything about the history before it was like a building? Like anything about the land or the region? Um, we just go back to when it was a slaughterhouse, and we'll get more into that in just a, in just a bit. Um, but various urban legends and modern folklore claim that the site 
it's a, it's apparently they say a gateway to hell, if you will. Oh, oh, um, it's and it's like a portal, kind of. Yeah, they said that they that it's been called a gateway to hell, and it's most haunted, like its most famous spirits, which we're gonna really get down into the nitty gritty, is Pearl Brian. Um, oh, Pearl! Like I know, I thought about Pearl, your dog, um, whose corpse was found two and a oh, half miles that's away. Nice. Okay. No, in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. And other um, legends claim that Brian's murders were Satanist who cursed the whole location of where Bobby Mackey stands and about to haunt everyone involved in prosecuting the case of the murder of Pearl Brian. Um, there's also a legend that a pregnant dancer named Johanna um, committed suicide with poison in the 1940s after her father murdered her lover, Robert Randall, who was a singer at the club, by hanging him in a dressing room. So these are just like this is like a whole overture, and then we're gonna get down into like the actual property, like so. As far back as we know, this property was a slaughterhouse, mostly for eggs, and so we're going back to like 1850. It was a large slaughterhouse, it was and a meat packing facility, and it basically served all of like northwestern Kentucky and nearby Cincinnati, Ohio. So it was a pretty huge plant. They didn't um, meat packing all the way back then. Uh, yeah, I know, like, in 1850. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, huh? And so in the lower part of the building, there was a huge well. And this is what they think is like the gateway to hell. So there's this huge well that was dug up and it was used to hold the blood and guts of the animals that they were mutilating and waste from all the slaughtered animals. Um, so they used it like a sewer. Yeah, yeah. And some people... Um, think that after the slaughterhouse closed, it was only open from 1850 to the 1890s, and so it was just kind of abandoned, and so some people think that a satanic cult took place in the building after that plant moved out, and that not only animals, but possibly humans were slaughtered for rit like satanic rituals, and then their bodies were disposed of in that well, aka the portal of hell. And you said that was like the 1980s? That was 1850. 1850, sorry. Yeah, so we're going back to like 1850. 1850, it was the slaughterhouse. 1890, the slaughterhouse was no more. And they're speculating that the satanic rituals started taking place there in the 1890s. Jeez, so we're going man. like way back. So there's even satanic panic in the 1800s. Yeah. I thought that was just like a thing. It was Me too. But apparently, there. I mean, now this is just speculation, mind you. Um, so then, so all of this is happening at this property in the 1890s, and then um, we have, and I'm going to get into the specifics of Pearl Bryan, but after the 1890s, then you had that whole Pearl Bryan murder that happened, and we're going to get into the details, and then you have Prohibition, which is the mobster years, and so the slaughterhouse was demolished in the early part of the 20th century, and so the lot just kind of sat there until the 1920s. When a new building, they built a brand new building there, and it served as a casino, a night a nightclub, and a speakeasy during Prohibition. And it was ran by bobsters, so it was a very, you know, not very peaceful <laughs> type of place. So we go from meatpacking, satanic rituals, to a murder of Pearl Bryan, to Prohibition with, like, a, a speakeasy and ran by mobster. So already not a real good energy here on yeah. this property. And so um, when the prohibition ended in 1933, um, a guy named Buck Brady bought the building and he named it the Prime Rose. And so after more than a decade, like he had a successful operation there for over a decade. And then his casino caught the attention of Cincinnati mobsters who tried to basically like take over the operation. And so when Brady refused to sell, that's when there was a lot of violence there. Um, so they had a lot of fighting, threats to customers in the parking lot. And then Buck eventually drew a gun on a monster named Albert Red Masterson. And he was charged, like he, I guess he killed him and he was charged with attempted murder and left the casino business in 1946. So there was another murder there. And, so, <laughs> and then you get into, and we're going to get into this in more detail too, you get into, um, it was then a nightclub that was called the Latin Quarter in the 1950s, and then you have the Johanna's suicide slash murder, which we'll get into, and then in 1978, 
um, after a series of like fatal shootings and just a lot of just like a rough nightclub. Um, they were folk, they had to close the Latin Quarter, and then in 1978, Bobby Mackey buys it. So uh, this really, this really is like the for real roadhouse. Yeah, this is like the for real roadhouse. They just never found a Dalton to come clean it up. It, yeah, there was just no, they just needed a Dalton, <laughs> and it would have been fine. So Bobby has owned this since 1978, and so he's a young. Um, at the time, he was a young country singer. Um, and so he purchased it, and he said, I'm going to turn it into, like, a music hall and a tavern, and it's still there today. And, of course, um, they've had a lot of paranormal phenomenon, and they've been, um, like, bought, like I said, yeah, yeah, you can still go there today. We should, we should totally go there. We should totally go to Bobby Mackey's Music World. Yeah. And it's so crazy because um, I had mentioned earlier in the podcast, Bobby himself is skeptical about any paranormal activity. He said that he... He has never, like, he doesn't doubt what people have said, but he personally has never experienced anything at all. And it, he's on this since 1978. But he has had family members, employees, police officers, patrons, obviously paranormal, like, ghost adventures have been there, and they have experienced some crazy shit. Um, and he's even had clergy and psychics that have tried to help, but the dark force there still seems to linger. Um, and so... <laughs> It's, you know, I wanted to give you kind of the history just so that you can see that since the 1800s, like mid to 18, late 1800s, like there's just been a one thing after another. So there's a lot of energy here. Um, yeah. What happened then? So um, I wanted to kind of get into more detail about the actual ghosts that haunt this place. And I wanted to start with Pearl Bryan. Um, she was born in 1874 and she died in 1896. And so she was 22 years old. She was pregnant from Indiana, and she was found decapitated in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, which was two and a half miles from Bobby Mackey's Music World. Um, her head was severed. Um, it was just really a gruesome, horrible thing. And more recently, there have been claims of her, that they say that her ghost haunts Bobby Mackey's Music World. Like, there have been a lot of accounts of Pearl. I wonder um, why she would haunt his business when her body was yeah maybe because it was away. just so close or maybe like the, the actual murder happened there possibly and they found her body. yeah like i wonder my assumption is whoever knocked her up is the one that killed her so yeah well hey here you go we, we really get into this one so she was born to like a well-respected farmer and yeah. um she was a graduate at Greencastle high and she was just like you know from kind of a successful family and she had begun working as a Sunday school teacher, and she left her home in Greencastle in uh, January 19, or sorry, 1896, and she said that she was visiting a friend. But um, <laughs> her body was found headless behind what is, well, they said her body was found, like now it's a YMCA, but they, they found her body there on February 1st, 1896, by a 17-year-old um, farmhand. And according to the presiding coroner, Brian was found with multiple wounds across her back and her hands. And um, they also said she was decapitated while she was still alive. Jeez. So, yeah, it sounds like good. maybe defensive wounds. Which it's is pretty bad. Like maybe she like, with it. yeah, she was trying to fight him. Yes. Um, but here's the sad thing, too. Um, she was five months pregnant at the time of her death. And her body was identified by the tag in her custom-made shoes. And her headless body um, is now buried in the family plot in Forest Hill Cemetery. Wow, do you um, think she had those shoes? Uh, right. Um, so we Scott never Jackson, she was. right? And that, especially back then. So yeah, think, that's so random. Yeah. And so Scott Jackson was a dental student at the Ohio College of Dental Surgery, and he was arrested for the murder. And later, um, implicated fellow student and roommate Alonzo Walling. During the trial, it was revealed that Jackson had a secret romance with Brian for several months prior to her murder. Mur murder. murder. <laughs> Allegedly, in January 1896, Jackson and Walling slipped cocaine into Brian's drink. And while they were at the saloon um, in nearby Cincinnati, so I'm thinking that the saloon was probably Bobby Mackey's, um, they proceeded to um, murder her later that night. So they basically loaded up her drink with cocaine, had this conspiracy, like, we're going to get rid of her since she's pregnant or whatever. 
Um, and when they did the autopsy, they did actually find that there was cocaine present in her organs at the time of her death. So that that's, checks out. That's a really weird drug of choice to me. <laughs> yeah, like, I think I'm like I think you need something to like sedate you, but they're like hyping her up on coke. <laughs> I, I thought that too. I, I don't know. I, maybe it was the only drug they could get, but we're just going to make this work. Probably. Probably. <laughs> like all over the place then, I guess, even in Coca-Cola. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so um, Jackson and Waylon gave several answers about, like, what they did with her head, and they said that um, one of them said that they put it, they threw it in the Ohio River in a sandbar in Dayton, and the other one said that um, they threw it in the Ohio River and in a sandbar in Dayton, Kentucky, and the Waterworks Department, um, they drained and tried to find it. And they couldn't find it. So, like, they haven't found her head. <laughs> oh, um, it's pretty horrible. And so, a former detective, Cal Krim, of the Cincinnati Police Department, theorized that Jackson and Walling burned her head in a furnace of the dental college that they attended. So, they, he's like, you made this up. Like, you didn't. We don't. You were both dental students. We drained this river. We can't find her head. I'm thinking that you burned her body. You know? Like, they're um, already... so, like implicated they know they did it so why would they lie about where exactly the head is? and so to this day her head has never been located um and so jackson's trial began in april of uh it started april 21st and ended in may 14 1896 and then walling's trial began on may 26 and ended july 18th of that same year and they were both convicted of first degree murder and hanged um in march 1897 so yeah, so it's um it's a very popular case actually, and it um it says that some people actually take souvenirs from her from the crime scene, like even like mm -hmm. they'll go visit it and like mm -hmm. even take like branches and buy Pearl Bryan merchandise from a store. And I, I don't I'm not a fan of that. I'm no, sorry. Thank you. Um one report says the trial was theatrical and lo local newspapers dubbed the case the trial of the century. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of people doing that. I don't um, know. Also, that doesn't sound like, I, it to me just sounds like a bunch of coked up people went nuts and like beheaded somebody. Yeah. Like, you and know what I, I mean? Think it, um, I kind of think it goes back, like, a lot of people are trying to make it, like, tied into the whole satanic ritual with, like, yeah. the portal there. And so I think that they're trying to, like, make that all fit. I feel like it was, I knocked up this lady, shit, I gotta get rid of her. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's either Situation. that, like, I, I want to get rid of her because I don't want this kid, or or they're getting, like, maybe they were all just freaking coked up out of their minds and didn't even, yeah. like, mean to do it. <laughs> it's pretty bad. And so, yeah, I'm not a fan, like, I mean, the fact that, you know, I know, like, we go to haunted locations and, and stuff like that, but there still has to be some kind of respect level, you know? Um, like, if you wanted to go and leave something for a pearl, that would be one thing. But, like, to, like, try to take, like, a rock or branches. Like, I just, I don't That's like that. That's bad juju. I don't bad like that at all. Yeah. I thought that was kind of crazy. But apparently, like, you know, this case was so huge that um, the citizens were just outraged. And they were fearful of there being, like, a public lynching. And so they had to, like, really keep um, the two murderers in jail under close watch. And they had to, like, hang them fast because... It was just, just heaven forbid the public kills them before. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was quite an outrage. So Pearl is said to uh, definitely be one of the stronger spirits there at Bobby Mackey's music world. Um, and if that was... Are there any... Do you know if there's any, like, weird happenings at the YMCA? <laughs> I don't know. I would be interested to find that out, too, you know? Um, yeah. I'm, not, I'm like you, like, I'm not sure why Pearl visits Bobby Mackey's more so than the place the actual murder took place, but maybe the actual murder did take place at Bobby Mackey's and her body was drugged yeah, or something. Maybe her she's head like, is okay. somewhere in Bobby Mackey's and she's trying to tell you. Maybe that. her head is in that portal, like, you know, like, yeah, who knows? Um, so maybe that's why she's such a strong presence there at that establishment. So if that weren't enough, we have Johanna or Johanna. Uh, so in the 1950s, Johanna fell in love with the wrong man. So it's that whole like tainted love story. And so she lived at home. She was a dancer in the club and she was a dealer in the casino. 
And so her father was a jealous and spiteful mobster. And he got wind of her um, having an affair with someone there. And so he had the man killed. And so then um, Joanna was so devastated that she poisoned herself and then you know, took her own life. Um, so the building, re so I, just to kind of to circle back to our history, remember that it I, when it was the Latin Quarter, <laughs> excuse me, oh, sorry. So when it was the Latin Quarter, that's when this happened. And it said that she, one of the things they say about Joanna or Johanna is that she was um, said to wear rose into perfume. And so, um, and so that's one of the things that you'll hear when I tell you like the accounts, like some people really claim that they can like really smell that rose, like roses or something like that. So when she, so she fell, so Robert Randall's who she fell in love with and he was like a singer there, like he would come and perform. And so also like Pearl, she got pregnant and she wanted to run off with this singer. Like, they were in love. But her father was like, no, this is not happening. Um, and so he basically, you know, had the singer killed. And then she actually poisoned her father. I don't know if he died or not. I'm assuming maybe he did. And then she um, she took her own life in the basement of the building. Damn, she doesn't play. No, she was like, done and done. She's like, I'm um, kill you too. Wow. Yeah. And so, like, so that, those are kind of some of that's like the history and some of the bad things that have actually happened on the premises. And so um, I found on like, if you go on to, so one of the websites I went on to, it actually had patrons like kind of tell their story and you can see them. I think some of these folks are actually witnesses on ghost adventures and they just kind of like tell their stories. And so I just want to tell you like the encounters that people have had there. Yep. So um, one fellow, J.R., I'm going to assume it's a fellow, it may not be. So J.R. Constigan, um, he's like kind of, that was his bar, that was his, his honky tonk. He likes Western style stuff. He, he loves it. So he was in the bathroom at Bobby Mackey's and he was attacked. He said while he was washing his hands, he looked into the mirror and there was a man shaped hole in the air complete with the cowboy hat a and it's a man shaped uh, hole yes i don't know and it said that so like this entity came at him like punching and kicking and clawing and beating him until he fainted <laughs> good <laughs> god <laughs> poor guy and like and i'm not trying to laugh but it's like i'm thinking of like how intense that entity or energy must be because it's really difficult for spirit to come through and so to beat the hell out of you until you faint like, oh, wait, until he fainted not got knocked unconscious like it says until, until he, he fainted, fainted. My, re my reports say until he fainted okay this is his this is his I, he witnessed this it his, this is from him. Like, this is his, this is what happened, according to JR. So, he got punched, kicked, called, and beat until he fainted. And then once he recovered, he ran straight to Bobby and told him that he needed to get control of these club's evil spirits. And Bobby laughed, thinking, like, he's like, you back bet Bobby did. Like, okay, like, kind of like we just did. And um, JR was just like, he, this is when shit gets real. JR fucking sued Bobby for negligence. Oh, whoa. How did he even, did he win? <laughs> All right, here we go. So JR sues Bobby for negligence and allowing ghosts to operate without any warnings to those patrons. And so the judge threw the case out, <laughs> and um, he recommended that Jr. take the matter up with a higher power. I guess they don't like maybe Zach Bagans. I don't know. And so, <laughs> so Bobby's lawyer told him like you might want to put up a warning sign or something. So in front, when you go to Bobby Mackey's, in front of the entrance, um, <laughs> it says warning to our patrons. This establishment is purported to be haunted. Management is not responsible and cannot be held liable for any actions of any ghosts or spirits on these premises. <laughs> so, I mean, he's looking out, right? Been warned. Like, and that's what I'm because... Like, I would like to be on that like, jury. 
No, what I love is that whenever you do see those random warning signs, it seems so random. And you're like, that is there because this happens. <laughs> right. You know, like, I was like, I try to think of a good example of one. Like, like I don't know, like, like don't feed the alligators or something. Or like, don't hold your baby too close to the alligator pen at the zoo. And it's like, because somebody did that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, this guy, you know, gets his ass beat in the bathroom by you know by a ghost that appeared I guess out of the commode or something and <laughs> he faints <laughs> tries to see poor Bobby Mackey. <laughs> oh god. I mean so yeah so I thought that was interesting. Okay so encounter number two. So this happens in the mid 1990s. So a car um like took off down the road lost control and smashed into a telephone pole that was located right outside of Bobby Mackey's front door. The occupants were killed immediately. Like, oh shit. Um, yeah, like, so it's like another kind of haunted thing, right? And so a fellow named Larry Hornsby was the first police officer at the scene. And as he stood there, kind of looking over the wreckage, a woman dressed in the evening gown came out of the club and offered him a pair of tablecloths to lay over the corpses. And the next week, Hornsby came by to thank her. And the club, um, he was telling them, hey, this lady in this, like, you know, came out and helped me. I just wanted to say thanks. And they said, um, our bar was locked. No woman ever existed. We were closed at that time. She was awfully dressed up. I know. <laughs> was kind of maybe it was Joanna, you know? Like, whoa, you look spiffy coming out of Mackey's. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what the hell goes on at Mackey's, you know, but, um, and they confirmed that at the time that that accident happened, the bar was closed. There was nobody there. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So. Woo. All right. Encounter number three. And this, um, has to do with the gateway to hell. All right. So, like we had said before, like some really strongly believe that this building's basement is like a portal, right? And so, um, there are stairs that are apparently like kind of go down like near this well and um they say that they're the stairs that lead to nowhere and that you can hear like phantom footsteps and just like different types of things happening like people are like trying to go downstairs but there's like nowhere to go or there won't be anybody there and there have been a lot of um they think that um that something that the spirits okay so you've got that well right that and you got this so you have the staircase and you have this well and so when they say the stairs lead to nowhere like they go down to nowhere or up from well, the well to the, nowhere pretty much like they go down to the well and then the well goes out to nowhere or oh. who knows where okay. you know to hell if you will but i think that um some people said that they feel like they've heard and i've heard this too like spirits can't cross over flowing water and so um, they feel like maybe there's some kind of current in that river that keep the dark forces trapped inside the building because they can't cross over and go. I've heard that water sometimes draws energy. I know. And I, maybe I'm thinking the vampires. Yeah, they can't cross without their coffins. Maybe it's, but there. that was just like some people think, you know, these stairs, like they hear these footsteps and like they feel like, Okay, these spirits are trying to escape, if you will, but okay. there's nowhere for them to go because of the water. It keeps them. Yeah. So that's just somebody's opinion, and it could, maybe. Um, but there was a, um, so I've got so many encounters. This is encounter number four, former caretaker. Yeah, hey, Bobby Mackey never has had one. Bobby Mackey claims he has never personally had any experience whatsoever. That's he doesn't deny it, but he personally has had no experience. But I just like him. Yeah, they're like, I like Bobby. I like his like I think he has like a curly mullet and stuff. They're like, I dig like, him. I like him. I like his music. He's like their Dawson. Yeah. He's like, like you don't mess with him. You don't mess with Mackie. <laughs> I'm not messing with Mackie. <laughs> I'm not messing with Bobby. <laughs> I'm not messing with Bobby. I'm gonna mess with his his patrons though. And so they're mess used with to JR be in the bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to fuck up JR in the bathroom, but they're not messing with Bobby. <laughs> and, like, I feel like the spirit, like, who could have been Johanna, was being helpful, too, like, trying to bring out tablecloths to help, you know? So, JR, so far, is the only one that seems to be, like... Like a jerk. They're like, you know what, JR? You gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Where's Dalton? I want to know 
what JR was up to. I'm wondering if maybe the spirits were like, this is bad news. Like, I got to help my buddy Bobby out. I got to get this fucker out of here. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Like, they were looking out. (laughs) So, all right. So we have a lot more encounters. These are just like people that like frequent Bobby Mackey's, mind you. So there is this um, I guess, okay. Just just an aside. So remember the Hideaway in Rock Hill? I, I used to. Oh, Hideaway! Yes, I do. Oh, Hideaway! Yeah, it's like the only gay bar in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and um, I would be there every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of college. But like, it has a Bobby Mackey kind of vibe, I think. But yeah, I can see that. I love that place so much that even if I had a ghostly encounter that was bad in the bathroom, I would still keep going. Like so I totally, cool. I totally get it. If these people are, they just love this place and it's like their second home, and they're like, they're like I don't care. It's, fine. it's <laughs> like it's just, it's just a, it's just a part of it being eclectic. Yeah, they're just like mm, it's just part for the course. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Okay, so encounter number four. It was a former caretaker, and this is really messed up. So there's an apartment upstairs that he lived in, and I, he was on um, Ghost Adventures. But he says that he was demonically possessed by the spirits there, and he had to be, they had to perform an exorcism in the club by a minister. <laughs> so, uh oh. Like he couldn't leave the club? Well, I guess they did it there at the club, maybe. I guess maybe the spirits attacked him there, and he couldn't leave. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I wonder if it's, like, the conjuring kind of thing, where it's like, yeah. you try to take him out of the building, he'll die. <laughs> exactly. So that that's pretty crazy. Um, encounter number five. A patron claims to have experienced suffocating heat, a flying trash can, and a man with a handlebar mustache repeating... Die game, die. Die game? Yes. What is that supposed to mean? I have no idea, but this also happened in the men's restroom. I feel like a lot's happening in the men's restroom. I feel like there's something. Maybe uh, there's like toxic. Maybe there's like asbestos or some yeah, like black maybe. mold in the men's bathroom. Because this is like the second encounter in the men's bathroom. It's probably JR again starting shit. It probably yeah. isn't even really a spirit. It, I'm going to debunk it right there. Yeah. Like, JR, just we know. Get, just stop it, JR. <laughs> put it. We know you clogged the toilet and then you pretended like a ghost beat your ass so you could deflect it. Exactly. I'm going to, when we go to Bobby Mackey's, I'm going to put something in the men's bathroom that says JR was here or something. <laughs> <laughs> JR fainted here. <laughs> JR fainted here. <laughs> oh my gosh okay so encounter number six is from bobby's wife and so she was in the club and she said she was overcome by the scent of roses in the basement and then someone grabbed her around the waist picked her up threw her down and then pushed her down the stairs um she said it resembled um the sketches of alonzo walling who was one of the murderer for pearl she could see this thing Yes, and she said that the um, Alonzo, like the spirit, was screaming to get out and get out, and she has never set foot in the club again. Get out and get out. Get out and get out. So she's never gone back there again. Get out and get out. Yeah, so. that's almost like when this other person says, "I mean, I do." Like, <laughs> I mean, I do. Like, yeah. oh shit! I okay. mean, remember this is Kentucky, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, encounter number six, <laughs> club manager said that on several occasions, she would go through the club and kind of, you know, make sure like everything was turned off and everything and closed down for the night. And then hours later, she would find that the bar lights came back on, the front doors were freaking unlocked and the jukebox was playing. That and I, they talked man. about this on, um, on Ghost Adventures, it would be playing um, the anniversary the anniversary waltz, and it would be unplugged, and it would still, and it didn't even have that song. It was unplugged, didn't have that song, and would be playing. So pretty spooky stuff. That's pretty crazy. Sorry, yeah, I had to let, I had to let the kitty cat in. Uh, I was like, oh, "Hello, are you there, Jr.? <laughs> Jr. came to get me for talking to Jr. Jr. Get out." <laughs> I mean, get out. (laughs) I mean, get out. (laughs) All right. Last encounter. 
Um, so there was another employee of Bobby Mackey's, and he said that he saw a dark, very angry man behind the bar, and um, the spirit called herself Johanna, and she would often speak to him and leave the scent of roses in her wake. Wait, he saw a dark, very angry man? Yeah. And it was Johanna? Um, so I'm thinking it might have been her dad. Oh, probably. Because then, like... Maybe she, she did would, kill him. She would speak to him, and then all of a sudden he would smell, like, roses. So I'm thinking, okay. dad's there. Yes. Well, that sucks. Like, she, you know, poisoned him. Exactly. Like, she's like, one down, too. Yeah, but her boyfriend isn't there. The no. one she wanted to spend not, forever with. Not in my research. I'm not saying he's not. Just not in the research that I did. I mean, that, that kind of seems like karma. Like, oh, you murdered your dad to, because you were mad that he took your lover away. But guess what? You're spending eternity with daddy. With him. Yeah, exactly. And so if you are interested in uh, Bobby Mackey's music world, um, there's a book that I kind of want to read. I think I might get it. It's called Hell's Gate terror at bobby mackey's music world <laughs> and it's actually written by um one of bobby's friends i think he's actually the person that they had to do the exorcism on and so he's like experienced like stuff there Does um he still go to the bar or uh, well i don't know but this book has been the subject of a lot of tv shows apparently like he was on geraldo um sighting wow, really? encounters sally sally jesse um, so it, it kind of takes like a lot of docu, you know, a lot of documented cases there. Um, of course, I always recommend checking out Ghost Adventures. They did, this is really like the first episode they did here is honestly like it's timeless. I love it. I think it's so fun. Um, you can also just go to Bobby Mackey's world. Um, they have a, um, website and it will, it's kind of cool too. Like, you know, they kind of, um, you know, they kind of embrace this whole thing for their marketing as well. It looks like a really good time, I'm not going to lie. And then, um, of course, you can always go to, I found a bittersoutherner.com, which I thought was pretty cool. And this um, this article where I got a lot of my research was called Honky Tonk Hanks. And, of course, you can always check out our friends at the Travel Channel because there have been other uh, paranormal folks that have, um, hey, Lou, that have... Um, also investigated this place so that's Bobby Mackey's world and or Bobby Mackey's music world and in a nutshell but I want to go there like I really do want to go there yeah like do they get like uh, I don't know like people to perform there or is it just Bob? yeah like, it's actually like a music hall so I mean I think that they have concerts <laughs> and I mean it's like a, a tonky tonk it looks like a blast I'm like, thinking, like, when I turn 40 in June, maybe I should, we should go to Bobby Mackey's for my well, yeah, we should. <laughs> that would be, we should I'm going to throw that out a there. a haunted, like, B&B. That would be so fun. That would be awesome. That I'm not going to really lie. Cool. We'll do a Bobby uh, Mackey, I don't know, epic tour. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. I want to go there so bad. But, I mean, a lot, I mean, and this is just some, like, there's even more encounters, but it was just go on and on. So, a lot of people have had um, a lot of spooky things happen there. And, of course, it's a, I mean, not a real good track record there. So, a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of things um, happening. So, if you want to check out a haunted honky-tonk, you might want to check out this place. Yeah. Sounds great to me. I know. I, I think it's like, a uh, time. I hope they have like Dolly and like Alabama on the jukebox. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, you know they don't have the anniversary waltz, even though it plays. Yeah. So <laughs> I think crazy. it would be a really fun time. So, um, oh, yeah. and I think it's really cool that Bobby's been able to maintain it since '78. So he's been going strong as an owner. Uh, especially with all of the haints and the crazy stuff and just, I mean, just with COVID and how things are anyway, I'm glad that Bobby's still, you know, able to open his doors and have a good time. And I'm here visited by Lou, my niece, who was a cat. Yeah, she's just rubbing all against the microphone. She's all hey. about some Bobby Mackey's music world. She's like, she yes. wants it. She's like, it's music to my ears. <laughs> you say Bobby Mackey's. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but I want to go. I really do. It's on my, my my top places to visit. Like, Bobby Mackey's, here we come. 
Let's do it. <laughs> and I really, I'm going into that men's bathroom. It's oh yeah, totally. It's gonna happen. Totally. Like, wouldn't it be funny if like Stephen like passed out or something. <laughs> <laughs> if anything does happen, it will happen to Stephen. <laughs> He's like, whoa, ass. <laughs> like, uh, where have you been? Like, oh, I don't know. There was like a hole shaped like a man, and it slapped me. <laughs> I was washing my hands. And it said, get out and get out. He's like, I don't know. Like, I just I, don't, I just woke up on the floor. <laughs> That's so true. He'd be so chill about it. But guys, um, like he'd come back with but he'd come out with four beers. Like, you don't even believe this. I just yeah. attacked my ghost. <laughs> like, I think I just had an experience in the bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely taking Steven Peanut. If you're listening, uh, you're going to Bobby Mackey's Music World. Yeah, so we're, all going. we're going. Amanda, you too. Amanda's going, which is going to hate every second. It's like I hate this country. So, like, do they even have food? They I probably don't have want. Beer. She's like, like, do you have? Do you have anything sweet as far as drinks or just beer? Can you bring in food? She's like, I don't <laughs> drink, and this isn't fun. Yeah, she'd be over in the corner. She's like, I hate this place. No, no ghost experiences, no anything. She like it sucks. She like it's not even haunted. It's just trashy. <laughs> yeah, it'd be me. Like, and everybody's you know, just have a blast. <laughs> yeah, like well, this is so fun. We love Bobby Mackey's. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> should take some. We should take day. like business cards or like merch and be like, hey, can we put some Stormy Willow stuff here? We should. We should. We're we'll in awesome. the men's bathroom. We're gonna put Jr. Was here. <laughs> Like, we'll throw them outside of the bat- men's bathroom. Like, did you make it out alive? What t shirt? It was JR famous. <laughs> <laughs> JR, we're coming for you, man. Trying to hurt, trying to see Bobby. Not cool. Yeah. Not cool. <laughs> Bobby has nothing to do with that stuff. He didn't ring the ghosts. Exactly. Like, I'm sorry. If you're not a friend of Bobby, you're not a friend of mine. And I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, well, we, we, stand, we stand with you, Bobby. We stand with Bobby. <laughs> Hundred percent. We're gonna totally go Dalton on anybody that says otherwise. Yeah, that, that we're gonna have to make some merch out of that. Like Stormy Willow stands, yeah. Bobby. Yes, hundred percent. We'll mail some to Ghost Adventure friends. Yeah, it'll be great. We have all these big plans, but no listeners. <laughs> I know. I know. I think maybe we're up to three or four, but that might just be all the times I read. I think it's us. And <laughs> it's <Mom>. us. <laughs> yeah. It's like thank you for listening, Mom. Yeah, Amanda doesn't even listen to the show. Steven's listening to this re to us like when we did our recent oh, launch. She's like, yeah, nice. I like it. yeah, thanks, Steven. Thanks. Appreciate it. I mean, I listened <gasps> to the old one, but not this one. I tell you what. Uh, oh, well, that's my story for the week. That's my haunted yeah, that was a good one. So now you can like go and watch um watch some Dawson kick butt and you know and think about Bobby Mackey. Yeah, that's really cool. I definitely do want to go there. Sounds like a lot I of fun. You. And, I uh, definitely want to go. Yeah, definitely going to make plans to go. Let's do it. We are going to do look, it. Look out 2022. Yeah. We're going to find out where Pearl's head is. That's, we're going to find Well, I don't know if I want to find it, but yeah. I don't want to find it. I just want her to tell me where it is. Yeah. <laughs> point we, it just out. Wanna, we just want to return it to your body so you can be at yeah. peace, Pearl. You hear that, Pearl? Help us out. Yes. We want to make you whole. Or help you. I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> awkward. <laughs> uh, we just want you to find peace. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that's my story. That's my Valentine's story for you. Yeah, it's good. I love a good, a good spooky story, especially with so many um, encounters and accounts. Oh, so a lot of fun. encounters. A lot of encounters. So, and I feel like the clientele would be a lot of fun too. Like I feel oh, like people know. that come would be a blast. Yes. Like, I just feel like they're there to party and all about some ghosts. And I just think it would be a really fun crowd. I just want to people watch and hear people's I, stories. I think it'd be great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And down. Thanks on us. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> well, wait, we don't have our account yet. So oh, wait, let's get okay. our account. We need to get our account. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wait, it's just got it's to be like, you know, just, I don't just know. similar. It's like but five people in the bar. No drama. <laughs> Yeah, so like, who do we think we are? Nobody even knows who we are. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, thank you for listening to my story about the haunted honky tonk. Yeah, that's a good one. So I need to. I think 
there was a keyword you said in this one, which you won't pick up on. Please stop scratching the walls, Freddy Krueger. Sorry. Um, but yeah, there was a keyword you said in this one, and I think it confirms what my next topic's gonna be. Oh, I can't wait! Yeah. I think I know. I'm gonna see if I'm right. Yeah. Okay. You can text me about it, but yeah. I'm gonna wait till you until you air it. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. I think I know what it's gonna be, so that'll be fun. Um Love and it. as always, uh thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Um if you liked what you heard, be sure to like, follow, and spread the word that it's a fun show. Absolutely. Um yeah. And any ways you want to get in contact, just go to stormywillow.com. It has all the ways to contact us. We'd love to hear your stories. Um, if you have any topics you want us to cover, just let us know. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. Happy Valentine's Day, my love. Yes, and Black History Month and yes. uh, Super Bowl and Olympic Girl Scout season. Yeah. All the things. All the things. Yeah. So, yeah. as always, stay safe and stay curious. Absolutely. Bye, you guys. Bye.